Hey, what's up ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube universe? I have something incredibly awesome to show you guys today. Now this is for um, the those of you that are really into the autonomous aspect of uh, radio control modeling, the kind of the build your own drone side of things, those of you who want to take the next step beyond FPV. This is the Pixhawk PX4 Autopilot from 3D Robotics. Now to put, put very simply what this is, this is essentially uh, the Ardupilot 2.6, uh, but it's totally revamped, uh, a lot bigger, a lot stronger, a lot better set up than uh, the 2.6 in my opinion. So let me show you what you get uh, in the box. I purchased these separately. This module is the upgraded U-Blox GPS. These modules are the 3D Robotics 915 megahertz telemetry kit. Now the reason I'm using 915 for telemetry is because I am uh, using 433 for control and I might get a little bit of problem with noise floor from cell phones but uh, I will likely be able to filter most of that out there's also bi-directional amps you can get for this thing but more videos to come more videos to come we won't get too deep into that uh, so here's a Pixhawk itself packaged really well There it is. Man, what an impressive board. One of the things that I like is it's uh, got a lower profile case. It's designed to be fully encased. So that's really cool. It's got actual uh, cutouts for the adhesive pads in the back that hold it down. Nice arrow showing you which way it goes. Forward. Now it's got a lot of different features than the APM uh, 2.6. I'll go ahead and read them off to you because I can't honestly remember all of them. Uh, this one has 14 PWM outputs instead of uh, to the 12 that the APM 2.6 has. It also has two ports over here, the RC and SB ports. Those are for uh, PPM multiplexed input and PPM multiplexed output. Uh, now for you Futaba guys, you guys call that S-Bus, but any, anything that does PPM MUXT will work on here. Like an easy UHF, you can put your inputs on the PPM MUXT. Uh, this has five serial ports, so four with some bi-directional functionality, and um, the three, the old version only had three. This one has nearly double the RAM that the original one had. It has a 256 kilobyte uh, RAM bank with a 2 megabyte flash as opposed to the original APM 2.6 that had a 192 kilobyte RAM and a 1 megabyte flash. It has a much uh, more modernized sensor suite now I don't know what they really mean by that, but I th I'm guessing that the sensors are going to be a lot higher precision and lower latency. It's got a, a louder buzzer driver. It's got this external multicolored LED also. Um, now the cool thing is that you can apparently program this to give custom commands, but I'll get into that a little later uh, because I am not 100% sure how that works. It's got support for a panel mounted USB extension, so you can just plug it in directly through USB. Uh, power architecture is a lot better. Looks like their voltage regulation that they've stepped up. Uh, better protection on the pins against shorts. Better uh, power sensing on the rails, internal and external servo voltage. Support for spectrum satellite pairing. Now this is really cool. See where it just says, uh, Let's see, SPKT slash DSM. You can plug a Spectrum satellite right in there instead of wiring in your receiver like the old one. Make it a whole bunch easier because this essentially, Spectrum puts out a sim uh, signal that I believe is a, a PPM signal through their um, 
through their satellite ports, but I'll have to look more into that. I'm, I'm pretty interested in that. All right, and there's no uh, more solid state relays. So apparently the solid state relays were not used. Apparently had, they had some inboard switching stuff like the receiver controlled switches. But that's not really something that we need on the board because we can always attach receiver controlled switches off the board. Uh, plus, I know Turnigy makes one that actually has nine different functions. So if you have this device cycle through the nine different functions fast enough, uh, you can probably skip over them selectively. And the connectors are apparently easier to disconnect in the case as because the surrounding plastic uh, kind of forces you, you've got those slots in there, forces you to push them in and pull them out without them getting stuck. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Um, the case prevents the servo um, connectors sliding out of place because they've got these little locks in here. Uh, okay, and the external power supply uh, works, comes with a free module and it works with this. So that's kind of awesome. I like that a lot. Uh, so when I looked at this, I believe it was approximately 400 with all the gear that I bought it with. But um, that's relatively similar to what the APM would have cost. I think the APM 2.6 would have been like 260 plus another 100 for the radios and another 75 for the GPS. Don't quote me on that, but the price discrepancy was maybe 10 or $15. So I said, you know what? Because this one has a significantly better RAM, because this has more ports and features, it's going to be able to, in the future, because of the, that extra processing power, run uh, potentially more powerful firmware, get more stuff done at once. I said, you know what, go for it for the extra 15 bucks. It seems totally worth it. Now, I have not played around with programming this yet, so stay tuned. I want to go completely in-depth for the way that you program that because it does come with a bunch of other stuff. Like it comes with an external buzzer, that's really cool. Now you can actually mount that somewhere in your plane where it'll be, or your copter where it'll be heard more easily. Uh, it's got a USB kind of an auxiliary flash tool for the micro SD that's in there. Now, now the reason that I like that a lot is uh, because if you get a problem with the USB in there, or if it locks up, you can just stick it in here and run it. Uh, there's stickers for APM plane, rover, and copter, so you know what your channels are. I'm not going to stick them on. I'm just going to, you know, look up the channels, write them, write them down on a piece of paper, and just keep that in case I want to switch this out to something else. It'll just be a lot easier if I have them numbered and then go look up the numbers in a manual. We've got a larger adapter in here for our micro SD. Free power module. I really like that. It runs XT60s and I don't, so that's going to go to Dean's. External LED. Now, I love this because it's going to be buried in a Sky Hunter pretty soon, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to want to see what's going on. So I'll have this sticking out of the fuselage or sticking up near the camera or something so that I can look at it on the bench and see what it's see what's going on without ripping the plane apart. Uh, various serial bus cables here. Adhesive pads, USB cable in there, and a splitter of some sort. I'm gonna guess that this is for sensors. It looks like an I2C splitter. But uh, I, this uses a different sensor interface, it looks like, so I'm very interested to see how that works. But, you know, this is just our first look, so I will give you guys a lot more uh, in-depth data on it pretty soon, as soon as I can get it figured out. But I just wanted to show you this bad boy and talk about all of its features. So if you're planning on buying it versus the APM 2.6 and you're wondering what the cost discrepancy is for, uh, that's it, you know, that's two extra, the biggest things that I like about it, two extra ports, you've got your upgraded RAM, and you've got a lot more uh, variability with what you can do with, especially the DSM and the sensors.
So if you've liked this video, guys, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe so I can keep making more for you. Uh, every subscriber I get gets me closer and closer to building the baddest sky hunter you guys have ever seen. So keep those subscriptions coming, and I'll keep the videos waiting for you.